Well, it's now just a little bit after 7 a.m. on Wednesday. Uh, fairly close to the brewery right now. Certainly, it's got some sun coming up here, but uh, you can see the, the fire over that direction, smoke threads and such. Uh, yeah, there's still plenty of smoke around, although uh, wind patterns make it more or less dense in any given area. We'll see how the brewery looks this morning. No real problems expected other than just a lot of ash and a lot of cleanup from all the wind damage that we had seen before in the last few blocks. Just heard on the news, largest evacuation, uh, well, larger than uh, Katrina evacuation. Uh, what do you know about that? I was actually prevented from going home last night, even though uh, technically, according to the maps I was looking at online of evacuation areas, uh, military uh, with the Humvee and the khakis uh, and, uh, um, and the, uh, the automatic rifles uh, prevented us from going. Not, not that I challenged them, I went and accepted their uh, statement that the area was closed. Um, interesting. This will give you maybe a small idea here. This just happens to be a gathering of, uh, well, it's about 90% Ash. And the fires were still a couple of miles from this spot. Gives you an idea how much ash was uh, just floating around, is floating around in the sky, even though it looks comparatively blue and clear at the moment. It's still definitely smelling in the air. Just walked into Mitch's office, thought I'd check in, know what's how's going with the production schedule. What are we going to do today? Uh, well, if all goes well, we're going to start brewing again today. A um, couple of brews. we got the bottling line coming in a little bit later. So hopefully everybody's okay. Everybody sounds like they're going to be here. Um, I know friends and family of some of our folks are we're worried about them. But it uh, looks like everybody's coming in. We're going to start making beer again. More ash. You just see the volumes of it here. Amazing. Morning, Peter. Okay, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. You? Well, good. Glad to hear it. Surveying the damage this morning. Yeah, it's mostly just uh, mess. Huh? Yeah. Well, except for a big pine tree. That's a in the garden. Yeah. You hadn't seen it. Root ball rotated right on out and just flopped on over. We we'll get a crane or something to see if we can get that uh, back in place, but. Yeah, it is a bit of a mess. Look at the collection of all this. It's amazing how much ash in the area. In our area, everyone, fires weren't actually that close to this particular spot. The closest they got, about four miles or something. Yeah, they were they were in the canyon behind my house. Yeah. We just had some flare-ups and such, so. But there's ash piled up by the doors, like snow. Let's get the let's get the update. Let's uh, tell everybody while you tell me. Uh, this, by the way, Jim. Hi, Chef, how are you? Ruben, Bistro team, collectively. Great. Great. Well, the, uh, the bistro is um, still in disarray, so yeah. we've got quite a bit uh, of work to do in the kitchen mostly. The front of the house isn't so bad. We can clean that like normal vacuum sweep, mop, all the good things that have to do with the front of the house. The back of the house, however, we're getting our floors redone in the kitchen, so we've got all the equipment out in the back of the, of the bistro, and we're getting the floor sealed. Um, having said that, we have to clean everything before we can even start prepping food. Right. I was down there a little bit earlier with Chef, and it's filthy down there. Yeah, a lot of ash everywhere. Okay. So it is. The idea the idea that I had for opening up at five o'clock today is just completely out of the realm of reality. I would say that would right. that would be the best call is to uh, let's do it right and let's uh, let's uh, get the food prepped in safely and clean. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Eleven thirty AM and uh, you can see actually a fire out there. Um, here I'll zoom in. Yeah you can see the pinpoint of it. It looks uh, fairly small, that particular one anyways. But uh, to show you go, yeah, this is an ongoing thing. Winds have kicked up a little bit and died down and kicked up and died down alternatively today. Uh, but uh, well, we got a little bit of wind going on. Certainly nothing compared to what it was, but enough to kick flames around a little bit. Scary. 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 Did you evacuate, Chris? We did. We evacuated at uh, the first call we got from na were neighbors at uh, about 10 after 2 in the morning, Sunday night and Monday morning. And uh, the flames were literally uh, right behind our house up on the hill. Uh, luckily, they did 
uh, go south and west of us, and so uh, my wife left around 7 a.m. and uh, I never left the house, but uh, a bunch of us diehards, all the. Well, yeah. were you under a mandatory evacuation or voluntary? It was uh, mandatory that day, and then that night they said that things were safe, we could come back, but my wife was still worried, so she hung out at some friend's house for another day. Uh, but a bunch of the, the guys in the neighborhood, you know, we had a bonding thing, you know, at 11 a.m. in the center of the street, I was walking out with three, three different bottles of three 750s, and neighbor was bringing pizza out of his house, and we sat in the center of the street and all looked up at the hills, and we're like, okay, this is a very surreal thing. Indeed. Um, but luckily everybody, uh, as far as I know, uh, friends and family, everybody's safe, and it's a uh, travesty for the people that are affected uh, with losing homes and things of that nature. I'm just very grateful for the uh, lack of uh, loss of life during this event. Yeah. It's uh, miraculous. Well, uh, Chris, uh, I'm glad your home has made it through okay, but uh, hey, next time you get a mandatory evacuation notice, follow it. We had the car loaded. We were right there. I, I was ready to go. It's uh, about 4.45 now on Wednesday afternoon, and uh, Jake, how, how's it going with you? Uh, well, now that Temecula is threatened, it's uh, not going so well. Uh, we're worried about uh, closures on the 15 freeway and uh, the Palomar Mountain fire, which is threatening a lot of areas, is uh, creeping towards the county line. And uh, unfortunately, our head brewer, Mitch, and myself both live on the county line uh, in Temecula. So a bit of a concern right now, but uh, I'd rather get home before the freeway closes and uh, my wife's left up there on her own. So uh, yeah. I think I'm going to get out of here. Okay, yeah, enough about vlogging. Uh, thanks. Well, good luck. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me know how it goes and let me know if you need anything, Jake. Yeah, okay, Thanks, see you. Uh, for those of you who are out of the area, which is probably the most of you, uh, Temecula, by the way, is about 30 minutes north of Escondido, where our brewery is. It's just on the other side into Riverside County, so it's a neighboring county, but Temecula actually seems to have more of a home with uh, San Diegans than uh, that county. It's the very south end of that county, but never mind about that. Uh, it's still well within the region uh, of the fires, clearly, as Jake was just explaining. So a lot of our guys uh, live up there and make the 30-minute commute uh, down the 15 freeway uh, to the brewery here every day. So uh, Jake better get on the road, and I hope uh, it's well for him that uh, the fires get taken care of before it's an issue. Hmm. A lot going on. <laughs>